Just so you know, Daft Monks is half talk show, half actual play campaign that features adult language and topics. Viewer discretion is advised. <laughs> Let's get to it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Daft Monks Presents Podcast. Hey, Nate. Hey, what's going on, Nate? It's just another day. What have you been up to, you know? Anything cool? I'll just be miserable since you abandoned me in the state of Arizona. I'm sorry. How was the weather today? It's been nice, actually, you know. Because I left probably, like, today I woke up and the wind was, like, 40 mile per hour gusts out here where I'm at. (laughs) And I'm like, what the fuck was I thinking? You made a choice and I have to stick with it. I do. You gotta stick with my guns. Small town living for this cowpoke. (laughs) <laughs> but i feel like you were living in like a small town here because i don't know i think you had like what like a general you had like one general store and then otherwise yep. it was what 30 minutes to get to like a shopping complex or something yeah 30 minutes to get into town but if i wanted to get into the city it was like 40 minutes maybe yeah i felt like somehow you even though you weren't quite as like remote as you are now you might as well have been right like you had a gorgeous house but you lived in the middle of nowhere and i never wanted to go yeah (laughs) but now i'm planning on moving into like a metal hut so i know one step closer to becoming a hermit i had to i like i had to google what the fuck you were talking about because i'm like this quonset hut quonset and people do this yes it's becoming a big thing yeah Because uh, there's one guy here that I know from working here. He actually made one already. I need to, he retired and this is like retirement home, but I need to track him down so I can come look at his house slash metal building. Okay. So for our white collar listeners who have no idea what a Quonset Mm -hmm. hut is, imagine an aluminum pipe cut in half coming out of the ground, almost like what a lot of times, like what are those gardens or what are they called? A culvert. Yeah. I feel like it. It's where you would go to like buy plants or something and there's just like, you know, Ooh, okay. it literally is like a rounded steel hut. And this is what Nate wants to build a house out of. Have this yeah. like half pipe house and then just build walls inside of it. And you'll come visit and be like, you know what? This is shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it looks it's I was I was saying before we started the episode, um, it, I'm seeing some really cool examples and I'm seeing some real pieces of shit. So yeah. I think like you'd have to execute this well. Like it, it could literally look like a fucking steel pipe coming out of the ground that you live in. Like you could look like right. sewer people house or it could oh. look real artistic and like indie. Right. I hope so, man. Could you imagine if I blew all of the money that I get from <laughs> selling my house on something where I'm like, this is dumb. I don't like this. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> i'd be so upset that would be so cool right. though and then as you said it, like basically if you get away with no mortgage payment i mean there is a lot right. of shitty situations i live in for no mortgage payment <laughs> right i mean not a trailer but you know metal house for sure this is kind of like a giant trailer but without wheels <laughs> yeah so that makes it classy nate <laughs> nate when you live in a small town you can live in a trailer but if your trailer has wheels still you're white trash you're a piece of shit But if your trailer is is on jacks, you're all right. (laughs) This is just like a reminds me of a bunker. Like if if it was like a nuclear fallout were to happen, a a Quonset hut is where I would go to stay with somebody who would probably try to murder me and eat my body. But he'd probably also have a lot of provisions like that's kind of the the vibe I'm getting here. Come find me. I got guns and canned food and I am that kind of guy. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Nate, have you been watching the Winter Olympics? Be honest. Oh, no. I saw the one <laughs> meme with the slope where it looked like it was in Chernobyl. <laughs> and I was like, oh, man, I totally spaced that the Winter Olympics were even on. Like, now I feel like, am I less American or do I just not give a fuck? Because really, I don't give a fuck. The, the 2022 Winter Olympics, Chernobyl, <laughs> Beijing, <laughs> Tokyo, Chernobyl. <laughs> <laughs> Russia's like we've been waiting a long time to get the Olympics back, you know, and Chernobyl seems to be the right place. We can only think of one place to house the entire world. Russia would do something like that though because to be frank, they just want us to they literally want oh, yeah. us disposed of and that would better way than to expose us to like decades old radiation. Like it's really weird they pulled all their athletes. <laughs> <laughs> but where, where is it at really is it in china 
Uh, right now it's Beijing, right? That did not look like Beijing. That looked like the slums of Beijing. That looked like a nuke went off, and then they're like, uh, close enough, fuck it. Send some snowboarders out there. It'll Nobody will miss them. No, so my coworkers asked, what was your favorite, as like an opener question to our, our, our team meeting, what's your favorite winter Olympic sport? And so I had to Google even the list of what those are. And to me, it was right. like, slide down a frozen hill on one piece of wood, slide down on two pieces of wood, slide yeah. down inside of a piece of wood. But then there's some weird ones like the biathlon where it's like, ski down a mountain partway, then shoot some stuff, and then yeah. ski down a mountain some more, which I feel like that could be any Olympic sport, right? Yes. Like, you could do synchronized diving, and then you get out or even stay in the water and shoot stuff. And then yes. you know, go back up for the next. Like any sport would be a lot more interesting if you just incorporated target shooting with a rifle yep. in the middle of it. Add guns. Like <laughs> bobsledding, add guns. <laughs> like now not only do they have to bobsled around <laughs> turns, they have to hit targets <laughs> while they're going. Like the bobsled gets like longer, so now it's five people instead of four, and the fifth yeah. one just has a fucking weapon. He's just unloading, yeah, fully automatic, just <laughs> trying to hit targets, not hitting anything. You can't not tell any me targets. the ratings. The ratings would not go through the roof if that was the event. <laughs> yeah, even I'd watch it, and we both know, right? Because I'm thinking, man, there's going to be an accident. <laughs> 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 um so yeah i haven't been watching it honestly i don't really care as much about the winter olympics but what i will say is man i'm seeing all these headlines like this really seems like the most corrupt scandal ridden olympics that i've i've witnessed in my 30 some years here there was like this like underage russian girl who got disqualified for doping but they still let her compete then there was like this jamaican oh. girl who got or not jamaican i'm sorry but just uh like some somebody of like color basically was disqualified for the same thing but she doesn't get to like oh, compete. so it's like why because right. she's not a white russian girl yeah yeah i don't know but it's also in beijing so do they even care like china doesn't care it's so weird and then right. there's all these things of like people getting disqualified because they're like aerodynamic suits are not up to like standards there's just Ooh. i just keep reading like over and over again i think there was like an olympic figure skater who got disqualified i'm just like what what's going on is know. it because he was stuffing his trousers <laughs> like maybe that adds aerodynamics i don't know you know and how it's many like, chinese have been disqualified zero i'm sure so it's got to be corrupt it's got to be, Nate. It's got to be. Moving on. Yeah, because that's how much we care about the Winter Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I'm surprised it got that much airtime, honestly. Now all I'm thinking about, Nate, for reals, is figure skating with guns. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes, right? Like, name me, a, you could not possibly name me a sport. Even, like, archery, they shoot with, with a bow and arrow, then they put that down, then they pick up a fucking weapon. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay moving on for real real though okay, okay. we did something yes. pretty amazing last episode i don't know if you realize this nate do, Ooh, what, do you know what, what i'm talking do? about no i don't think so what do we do so we started talking about futurama and the next thing you know futurama is announced with new episodes for hulu and they're they're reviving it do again. you think we did that i absolutely think we put it in the universe and the reason i know we did is because it came into the universe really fucked up and that's also an effect of us, I think, as well. Mm -hmm. So have you heard about all this drama, Nate, about what's going on with the Futurama stuff? No, I didn't know there was. I knew about the new season coming out on Hulu, but I did not know there was drama involved. Is it like as much drama as the Winter Olympics? Is like, <laughs> what's going on? I mean, nobody's doping, I think. I don't know. Maybe. Bend but yeah. the actual drama here or gossip is or it's not gossip it's confirmed everyone's back voicing the original characters except bender's voice actor which is i think uh his name's something dimaggio and basically everybody's flipping the freak out saying they're going to boycott it and then it's going into like why aren't they paying certain voice actors like you, you can just replace them and it goes into right how like you know don't cross a picket line i guess with voice actors it's like don't voice right. someone else's character they should just pay you what you know it's worth and, and so that dimaggio guy he basically has posted on twitter a couple of times like he's totally open to doing the show but he wants like a fair contextual offer and i guess they don't want to give it to him who's not willing now i can't imagine the show without bender's voice even if you can like find somebody to imitate it right even the announcement image was bender <laughs> on the social right. media on hulu's social media it was bender with a sign saying we're back yeah but not him but not him <laughs> yeah 
but pretty much everybody <laughs> else. So pretty wild there. And then some people are also complaining the show's been canceled so many times. And despite that, it's had a, a lot of really good finales, even though it kept <laughs> canceling and coming back and right. kind of reckoning stuff. So people are like, just let it die. Like, let it stay dead. Now they're worried it's just like a money grab. But for me, I don't know. I was just excited. Like, what, what are your thoughts, Nate? I'm like, yeah, more Futurama. I'm on board. Oh, yeah, I'll definitely watch it or at least give the first couple episodes a try. You know, if it's going to be like disenchanted, then I'll watch a couple episodes and then not anymore. It's pretty yeah. <laughs> like yes or no for me, you know. Yeah, we were talking about Disenchanted a couple or our last episode as well. And that's another mm -hmm. that actually just released a new season. I think something too with that show is it like it doesn't stick to its own timeline. I don't know, like it right. like suddenly reverts stuff it did in previous episodes. Like there's no like consistency or coherence. I don't really don't understand the comedy in it. Like because some episodes are funny and then others are serious. Mm. Like, are you a funny show? Like because Rick and Morty. Yeah. Every single episode is fucking hilarious. I just watched the last season. But like Disenchanted, like what's going on here? Going back to Futurama, I feel like I doubt it'll be bastardized. Like I, it could just be a money grab and they do a totally horrible version. But the same, you know, people, Matt Groening and the other partner, I don't know, his, I don't remember his name, but the other guy who was, kind of drove that series is on board. So I feel like it's going to be pretty good. Right. I'll definitely give it a shot and go from there. You got one episode. Make it worth my while. Fair. I think if you're excited for it coming back, you're welcome. And if you're not excited for it coming back, we had nothing to do with it. Yeah. Don't worry about it. None of our business. There's a million other shows out there. Watch something else. Well, pretty big. Ah, big is maybe a generous word, but we are starting to make some live appearances this year. And the first one we're Ooh. willing to announce, Nate, is that we're going to be at the Wild Wild West Con in Tucson, Arizona um, on, I believe, March 5th, Saturday, March 5th. I am so excited for this. I love steampunk. And this is a steampunk convention. Sadly, we got the okay too late. So I haven't, I won't be able to make an outfit like I want to, but I love this. And I am so excited that we got accepted as a panel and that we're going to be there you know yeah. as nat one presents yeah super excited uh like you said nate uh we would have probably done something a lot more elaborate but literally we have never heard from these organizers until three weeks before right. i guess they probably went back and forth with covid it seems like there was some like technical and logistical issues they had to work through and so they weren't sure if they were gonna have the show so I totally understand no worries there but um i think we'll definitely be there in a more limited presence than we're planning to at other events this year um just because we had no idea we were going to be there until just just now uh if you're in like you know the southwest or you love steampunk it's it's a three-day or i think it's a four-day event actually but we'll be there saturday march 5th they do things like thursday night and then friday and then saturday sunday yep i feel like a lot of the like events are sold out or just not listed on their site yet but there is an absinthe testing um Ooh. like taste testing so i don't know i might see if you're down for that nate <laughs> um, sign me up is it yeah. legit though or is it like the american yeah. absinthe totally agree uh the name of the vendor is there so we could maybe research that but that's what my thought was too of like are we getting some right. like cool europe shit or are we getting some like like green colored wine yeah. cooler like <laughs> totally <laughs> Yeah, come and then join our panel. We don't have the time yet on Saturday, but we'll be doing a podcasting panel. So if you want to launch your own podcast, we'll and especially a steampunk podcast, we'll be giving Ooh. you some tips, tips, uh, like tips, tricks and and some stories and sharing our knowledge and honestly right. promoting ourselves, but mostly yeah. being helpful. I actually ran a steampunk D&D &D, uh, one shot or was it a two shot? Was it a two? No, it was just a one shot. And man, it was a blast. And if you need help with world building or things like that, I think everyone at the table had fun. And I know I dressed up for it as DM and it was a great time. It was a blast. I could only go to one session. I was so mad I couldn't go to the second. I don't know what I had mm -hmm. that, that day, but I was so mad I couldn't attend the second one. But you know, it was a fun, fun time. I also got to witness you wearing the smallest vest I'd ever seen on a grown, on a six foot tall man. <laughs> so that was, yep. that was super entertaining as well. It was a legit time period piece. So, yeah, people were a lot smaller back then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then our last kind of bit for our introduction today before we get on to our activity. So we are a sometimes D&D podcast. So I want to talk a little bit, Nate. Have, have you known there's been this like floating headline for a little while 
not a lot of news on yet. It's still in early development, but they're creating a D&D TV series. Have you heard anything about that? Ooh, no, I haven't. I need to look it up now. Is it going to be better than the D&D movie starring <laughs> Marlon Wayans and with the blue lips? <laughs> yes i there is a special place in my heart for that terrible movie i love it i love it too i know my dad was really into it and he made me watch it a lot and at first i'm like this is so dumb and then eventually i was like <laughs> it is dumb but i'm i'm a fan right i'm i'm all for it. the dwarf like sleeping out in the trash and he's like oh by the way i got a secret tunnel right by my trash <laughs> like let's escape <laughs> <laughs> you cannot push any plot holes by you, Nate. You are not a fan of convenient storytelling at all. No, I hate it, especially when it's in a movie. Like, come on, that's the that's the best we got. Is we got to a back alley. There's a dwarf hiding in some trash, and then oh, by the way, this is the way out. You're welcome. The big baddie with blue lips. I had just had so many weird mixed feelings about that guy. You I went on so about? many forums trying to find out what he was like is he like is he human is he supposed to be a tiefling is he like an elf or something like what is the deal and everything i found just says he's a guy with blue lips like is he is he currently being strangled is that why his lips are so blue is he cold you know does he have some kind of like reaction with his armor and he's freezing i don't know he just has blue lips and it drove me nuts We'll never. Like he deserves know. an Oscar for that choking scene. Yes. Like if you watch him, he is like really choking. Like someone is really choking that guy. Get that guy an award. His eyes are bulging out and shit. Like, come on. <laughs> the Oscar for best choke. <laughs> yes. Post humor, humorous. Or actually, he probably would come in second place to Arnold Schwarzenegger in Total Recall when they fly out of the window on Mars and they're like, <laughs> you know, their eyes are bulging. It would. It, it's a close second it's place. Close, would be hard to judge. All right. So these these news stories about this like D&D show, basically there's this company called E1. I've never really heard of it, but it was acquired by Hasbro. And then ha the Hasbro is basically trying to create, they're not using the word, but they want a multi-pronged approach for television, aka they want a multiverse for D&D &D and multiple TV yeah. shows. Seems like for the U.S., Paramount is maybe going to be the distributor. We'll see. But the big kind of news recently, because it's really just been like no news for almost the last year, is that they hired, they finally selected like the writer director, who is Ross and Marshall Thurber. Now, this is kind of a big deal because right now he's really hot because I don't know if you've heard, but the the movie Red Notice on Netflix. Did you watch that or hear about that? No, I didn't watch that. No. Okay, it's the it's the Rock, it's Gal Gadot, and then it's Ryan uh, Reynolds, and okay. it's like a spy whatever movie. Anyway, it is the number one watch movie on Netflix. It's only been out a few months, like of all time, so it performed Dang. mega well. Already has two sequels, so he's basically that director. But and at first when I heard that, I was like, don't care. I didn't watch that movie either, right. but you know what he did direct, Nate, that I am a huge fan of? What? Dodgeball, the underdog tale. <laughs> I love that one. So do I too, which is so bizarre that that's where this guy comes from. Um, right. But yeah, he did that. He also did a couple other things. He's also, oh, he's behind Stranger Things too, which I've actually never watched. Ooh, okay. um, but I, I hear love Stranger Things. Yeah, okay. It's very Cthulhu-esque. Yeah, I, so... Honestly, people so far are pretty excited. Um, even now, I'm excited. I love fucking dodgeball. Yeah, ex that's what it's so crazy. But like, that's what got me going. I was like, all right, yeah. all right. I just my favorite. Now thing you got about, me going. The favorite thing about dodgeball is when the luck of the Irish sign falls and kills <laughs> patches, patches of Hulahan, and like the irony of dying under the luck of the irish sign <laughs> it like it just got me so much it got me so much oh and, i have two favorite parts in dodgeball and one yeah. is when he's cleaning the truck and the hillbilly is sticking his finger <laughs> in his belly button and he's like yeah get in there deep life <laughs> and then the second part is when they're at the end and he's like oh steve the pirate's not here and the guy's like well who's steve the pirate <laughs> yeah like, you know steve the pirate and then the end, he's like, hey, look, Steve, the pirate. And he's like, you motherfucker. <laughs> I could see you doing that. Absolutely. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that movie is like literal genius um, on so many levels. 
But this guy also does seem this Ross and Thurber. He also seems like a real D&D player. So he tweeted, so deeply thrilled about this. Grew up playing the PNP version, level 13, lawful good paladin, Hala. Uh, enjoyed the heck out of DDO Unlimited, which is what that's Dungeons Dragons Online Unlimited. And learned to tell stories through always being the DM. Boyhood dreams come true. Can't wait to get cracking. Dang, I am excited for this now. I'm going to look this good. up as soon as we're done recording. Oh, I would yeah. absolutely like a D&D TV show. Yeah, a, a good one, right? Like a well done. Like if we could get if we could get The Witcher but funny and about D&D stuff mm-hmm. and then everybody's going to be like, "Oh, we already have that. It's called Vox Machina." Meh. <laughs> Is that my right, that's there? animated trash. <laughs> yeah, I thought for a second you're going to be like, "Who they get to direct?" Matt Mercer. And oh I'll be like, "Oh my god. god, can this guy just fucking do everything?" <laughs> Apparently. Um I did watch they've released more episodes of Vox Machina. It gets better. I'll admit that. Is it 100% Rotten Tomatoes in my book? Still no. It's a still a no. Is it still at 100%? I think last I checked, it was. Yeah, I keep checking it out of spite to like, be like waiting yeah. for it to go down. But even as much as a re- week no ago. No fucking way. Yeah. yeah, look it up. There's no way that it is still at 100%. I'm going to go on there just to leave a... I'm gonna go yeah. there and leave a bad review. Well, you gotta be like a critic to actually count. But oh. anyway. Well, okay. This is the plan then. I'm gonna establish myself <laughs> as a critic. I don't know. Get inside the system just so I can bring them down. I don't know. I put it on and I end up doing other things while the show's on every time. And I don't right. know, maybe I'm biased, maybe I'm the minority, but I can't get into it, Nate. I want to. I get it. I want right. to. Are you gonna watch it? Uh if I got time, I'll sit down and try it. But then that's, that's fair. Honestly, I really, I really like Critical Role and their stuff. Like I'm actually in our next D and D campaign. We're going to be playing the our pay to play game. Um, <laughs> I'll be using a Matt Mercer character. He does make good shit. <laughs> so here we're talking shit, and you're basically imitating your idol. So got it. Yeah, I love him. <laughs> I, wish I could wear those leather bracelets that he wears. Uh, I can't pull it off. You know, I can't do it. Well, anywho, very excited. We do. We are kicking off our pay to play D and D. That's what we're calling it, D and D campaign. Yeah. Uh, we had done a one shot. We kind of like tried out our professional DM, and uh, he passed the test. He's built us backstories. He rewrote your backstory. We already talked about that. He yep. literally was like, "Hey, this and is okay. Got... Let me make this better." Yep. And then he sent me extras. He sent me family members' pictures and my best friend's picture that died in my tragic backstory. He's going above and beyond, and I couldn't ask for more. I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited because, like, I want enthusiasm. I want enthusiasm. I also wanted somebody who's going to like take the time, put effort into this, and we, we got somebody. So he uh, he totally made fun of us because he remember like on previous episodes we're like, of course he says he listens. He just wants our money. But then he yeah. actually told us about listening to us talk about if he's listening. So. <laughs> we, we we can confirm he is actually a listener so and we appreciate it yeah thanks we appreciate you ryan i do moving into the activity part of today's episode nate it was recently valentine's day i don't know how you feel about this holiday nate it's a scam i got i got megan a card because i have to it's my duty and i love her yeah but other than that i i bought chocolates but then I bought chocolates that I enjoy. So I'm like, they're for Megan. But she hasn't eaten one because she don't even like them. So I'm like, nom, 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 nom. <laughs> Nailed it. If that's yep. not true love, I don't know what is. Yep. Done and done. I mean, hey, I'm right there with you, Nate. Uh, me and Davi, we didn't do anything for each other. We uh, we went to dinner. That's what we we got sushi. And that was a good Ooh. time. But we didn't. Uh, I was actually, he got a new car recently. So I was like, hey, you want me to get you like a a car wash membership so you can like keep it clean all the Ooh, time yeah. and he's like no he just like laughed in my face i was like cool that's why i asked <laughs> first glad i didn't spend the money on that oh see so. i pictured him as like the the hapless romantic one in your guys's relationship oh that's me right? usually but he killed it? it for me he's such a not romantic i think whoa um, i don't know he, he's very practical right so i think mm-hmm. when you when you once you like start dating somebody with practical like if you give somebody like put your heart on your sleeve and like buy someone that or make somebody a really nice gift and then they're like oh this is great i don't know what to do with it that just like stabs you through the heart <laughs> yeah and you bleed out a little bit so after a while you just learn like you don't have to spend money or go over the top like some people just you know there's those what were they love languages nate you heard of those yes yeah i actually read a book on different love languages really willingly yes because a guy at my work was having problems and i was like what are you talking about and he's like it's this book you should read it and i'm like all right man 
I'll read it for you. <laughs> and I read it and it, a lot of it makes sense, yeah. you know, if you actually want to apply it to your relationship. It, it's the basic concept of like, there's so many languages and all you need to know is that Nate might like gifts. He might like physical things like D&D books, but maybe Megan just likes compliments. Like she doesn't want physical things. She just wants compliments or sex. I don't right. know. <laughs> Who knows? Right. Like, there's like, cause there's like physical, there's affection, there's yes. spending time together, there's gifts. I don't remember all of them, but so it's basically like you tend to want to give people the affection in the way you like affection, you know? So if I like gifts, I want right. to get David gifts, but the reality is gifts, yeah. love people the way they want to be loved. So for, for David, it's really just about spending time with each other and just, you know, um, maybe like words of affection and stuff. And for me, it's definitely, and you're gifts. like, Oh Jesus, can I just get you a gift? Yeah, I, yeah, <laughs> exactly. hundred percent nailed it. <laughs> anyway. So <laughs> With uh, Valentine's Day being recent, we figured uh, let's talk a little bit about love. Let's let's do uh, like a, a, a Valentine's theme activity. And so what I pulled up here uh, very lazily, we're gonna do a little trivia for you, Nate, is the 50 most beloved TV couples of all time. Ooh, now, don't worry, okay. we're not going to do all 50. But we're going to see um, if you know who some of these couples are. And I'm not going to hold any punches. I, I know you don't watch every show on television, but many of these, I think, like, even there's shows where I'm like, I know what you're talking about without even watching the show. So right. let's, let's see, Nate. Let's see what you can put together. All right. I'm ready. I think. So this first one, I'll keep it, keep it super easy for you. All right. So it's like a 90s sitcom, right? And mm -hmm. basically, there's two couples in this sitcom, right? One is an on and off again relationship between two people and the series pretty much gravitates around these two. But the more iconic relationship and the more reliable pairing is these other two characters. One is a type A woman who is just very strong willed. And then the other is an irrepressible goof, right? They have like a slow build and they end up getting together and they end up staying together. And then the woman proposes to the guy, right? And they mm -hmm. adopt twins. Let's see if I can give you some more. Uh, Netflix paid a shit ton for this television show. It was on for many seasons until I think HBO got it later. Mm -hmm. What show am I talking about? For one, Ooh, it centers it... around like six basically friends living in an apartment. Oh, so, so friends. Okay. Yeah. So it's friends. Yeah. Well, who did. Who did the adoption? Now, Ross and Rachel wouldn't do the adoption. Yeah. So the only other couple is uh, Monica and Chandler. Yes. Monica and Chandler is the couple. So yeah. they're I, like, and I, I agree. I didn't watch a lot of Friends Day. I know you're a much bigger Friends fan than I am. But Monica and Chandler are like, seem like a much healthier couple to me than Ross and oh, Rachel yeah. were. Um, they seem kind of toxic oh, for sure. even at times. Totally. Okay. All right. So I threw that one easy one to you because I knew you watched Friends. But now let's go. It was a softball. Go, let's go all over the place. Okay. So okay, this I'm is ready. from a 1951 show, but you would absolutely know the title if I told you. So it's Black and White. It was on CBS. Mm -hmm. And basically, you got this guy who smokes a lot of cigarettes. And then you got this like redheaded goofball. Um, and this was like one of the first interracial couples basically on television. Lucy and Desi Arnaz. Yes. Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz. Yep. You are correct. Uh, from I Love Lucy. Yeah. That's right. I love that show. It's good. Even though it's still like so old, it's so good. The one with the chocolates. And so they just keep eating the fucking chocolates. Like, man. <laughs> Classic. A aside from like the interracial part, I think what's actually really interesting is it shows a woman being like, gross kind of it's like like lucille ball is like her humor is like not perfect and she's not like kind of what you would expect from somebody in the 1950s and so i, I think right. um pretty pretty cool and i think being a main character too was a, a big deal you know yeah. for a woman being a main character absolutely um there's like a big now i think uh huge huge documentary that's like super popular just came out a couple months ago about lucio ball Ooh, i might watch that yeah um it's like nicole kidman plays her and everybody was like nicole kidman and then Bam. yeah but then apparently she did an amazing job so oh okay uh bouncing around we're gonna go with another older show i'm gonna tell you the show just well i'll give you a chance first those were the days is a common phrase right from the song in the intro mm -hmm. and uh basically it has this like how can I describe him? He He's basically a lovable bigot who's struggling to handle the constantly changing world. And then you have this like ditzy woman, older woman who delivers occasional nuggets of wisdom and they're total opposites. Do you know who I'm talking about yet? I can give you more hints. Is it, is it that 70s show? That one's, that show is basically a spoof of this show. So all in the family, oh. you know, all in the family. Oh, okay. Okay. Was that with the, the guy who always sat in the chair 
Yeah. And I know exactly who you're talking about with the white hair. Yeah. Archie and Edith are their names. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So I didn't obviously also 1970s a little bit before our time, but iconic. This used to be on Nick at Night a lot. I, I feel right, like I yep. still saw like reruns and like Archie is like super miserable. And then Edith is like super lovable and delightful. And you're like, how do these people live together? Um, and yeah. I really feel like that 70s show is literally a spoof like of the show. Oh, yeah. Because it sounded like word for word. And like that show that we're talking about would be the thing where if I fell asleep with the TV on and woke up, this show would be on. And we're like, what the fuck is this? Like, fucking turn it off. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, and like as an adult now, I have much more appreciation. But as a kid, right, if it's not like modern graphics, I feel yeah. like it's what kids these days are like when they go back and look at a Super Nintendo, they're like, this is trash, like let alone junk. Yeah. I mean, even a PlayStation will look like shit compared to, you know, what they're running today. The right. X-Bone or PS5 or whatever the fuck we're playing. And they days. didn't even know what we had to do to play an import game on the PlayStation. Like I bought a Japanese game you and did? you had to put that piece of, yeah, you had to put the piece of paper into the door close uh, sensor the little button that says that the door is closed on the playstation uh -huh. so you have to time it so the playstation logo would come up and then you have to swap discs out with a u.s game uh -huh. and then the playstation logo would keep going and then it does another pause and then that's when you put the japanese game back in and did that and really work yes yep no it actually way. worked. i did not know yep. so the only game i really wanted to play that was an import was i was really big into dragon ball z back in the day and there wasn't mm -hmm. really like for a long time in the u.s like dragon ball z video games and so it was like right dragon ball z budokai whatever i don't know what it was back then but i wanted right. so bad but they were only like in japanese like you could find the game in the u.s but you, you i didn't think you could play it on the on a u.s a region lock PS yeah PlayStation. there's ways around it and then you did the same thing if you wanted to play uh burned games so uh, a couple of us would burn like we had an, an okay computer so you burn the playstation game from blockbuster or wherever you're at no and then you can way. actually play the burned game on the playstation yeah i didn't know any of this nate that's why so now you know <laughs> not to do that no. <laughs> obviously that stuff is so like locked now you could never possibly all of a sudden it, swat but... comes busting in <laughs> yeah, through your windows <laughs> freeze motherfucker um surprise motherfucker the only thing I ever did that wasn't really a hack, it was just more me like trying to get my shit to work was the PS2 was kind of notorious for like the like the laser that would like read the disc or whatever, like the eye mm -hmm. would get totally effed. And so you could like open it up and like turn like a dial that would like change the level of it. And that's how you could get it to read super scratch discs. Because I had these like games Whoa. that I scratched up as a kid, but I still wanted to play. Right. Um, Like Final Fantasy X was one of them and stuff. So I would like take my I'd have my PlayStation like a part where like the lid would come off and there was this, like ribbon that went from the lid to like the power button on the actual console. So you had to be careful taking right. it off because you could easily pull it out. So you had to like do that carefully and then like kind of take another part off and then like you just kind of like crank this knob. It was, it was wild. Yeah, kids will never know. Like I feel like kids don't take apart consoles anymore these days. Like no. a PC, yeah, they'll swap parts and stuff. But I feel like nobody's like hacking consoles as much. Not not right. in the way we were, like not to modify them and, yeah. and you know, make them like run different operating systems, but to just like make them do weird shit. Right. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Uh, so let's move on. This famous couple that's from a show that is probably the longest running scripted primetime series in U.S. history is basically about a family. They have three kids and it's a dysfunctional yet caring nuclear family unit. The male is a crude buffoon. The female is often the voice of reason. We see this a lot. Uh, these two lovebirds were named after series creator Matt Groening's own parents, making this decades-long TV bond oh, that more special. Simpsons, so Marge and Homer. Yep. Homer does so much dumb shit, and for the most part, Marge like forgives him and, and comes right. around. So I think that is... Like, it's very nice. It's lasting. <laughs> yeah. That's all I want, you know, is to be able to do dumb shit and be forgiven about it. Here's one from Grey's Anatomy. I'm just going to skip it. <laughs> I'm going to take a wild guess and say you don't know that one. But no, I don't know Grey's Anatomy. Okay. This next show, though, is a personal favorite. And if you don't know the show, which you probably won't, I'll, I'll be a little disappointed because I think it's pretty good. Okay, sorry. I mean, you still haven't watched Goonies, but whatever. 
<laughs> Let it go. <laughs> All right. With adorable nicknames for each other, like Marshmallow and Lilypad, what's not to love? Basically, we're talking about this really solid couple from the show Blank. The show is ostensibly forced on a character called Ted, telling the story of how he met the mother of his children. Uh, these um, side characters were the real romance. See, I, I never watched that show, but it's how you how I met your mother, right? Yeah. Yep. Correct. And then, see, I I, knew, I had a feeling. I never watched the show, but I had a feeling that like they're focused on what's his name, Jason so, Siegel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like, is is he? He's not the guy that like meets the. The mother? No, he's not the main character. He's the roommate of the main character for most of the show. Oh, okay. Because the black-haired guy is the main character. Ted, played by Josh Radner. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah. Doogie then, Hauser. Doogie Hauser. Um, yeah, I absolutely love that show. It does have a shit ending, but otherwise it's like, what, nine season seven? No, yeah, nine seasons of otherwise really great stuff. A little bit depressing ending, okay. but basically the roommate from college and this chick that his roommate from college met are together the entire series. They do have some breakups because it's like a sitcom or whatever, but it's it's a pretty good show. I, I like it a lot, and mm, they're a really okay. cute couple together. So uh, Marshall and Lily were the names we were looking for. Oh, because I know my sister tried to get me to watch it. And I was like, I can't trust you for a show. And then that kept me from watching it. Let's move on. So, of course, the main character got a lot of attention for being in relationships with multiple different vampires. But basically, these other two characters, one of which ends up being a witch. And then this other chick she meets in college, they end up becoming this like really cute couple, even though one of them ends up dying in season six. And then that makes the other character kind of go evil, but whatever. Oh my God. Okay. So it's not Buffy and Angel or Buffy and Spike. Willow? Yes. And what's what's her girlfriend's name? I know Willow is okay. also in How I Met Your Mother, right? The red yes. hair. Yeah, she's Lily actually. So yeah, that's another yeah. one. Okay. And God, I can't remember her. Yeah, I, d I couldn't remember the other chick's name either. It's Tara is her name. Oh, Tara. Ugh. Freaking Tara. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, everybody knows Buffy and Angel had their romance. I was more, I was team Spike more than Angel. I don't know about you. <laughs> but uh, I think Willow. Well, I hated the guy who played Angel. Like, I can't stand his face. Like, why is he always squinting? Like, is, are the lights in his eyes? Like, David Boreas. Or is his, he just... Yeah, does he just have that big Cro-Magnum brow that is just like, <laughs> looks like permanent shade, like it's a visor? But he's in Bones. Don't you like Bones, Nate? No, no I don't watch <laughs> Bones either. I don't watch Bones either. That's fine. You know what? Fuck that guy. I don't even know that guy, but from those two shows, fuck that guy. All right. All right. What about this one? What about this one? What started out as a mutual crush and flirtation blossomed into a beautiful romance by the end of the show. Basically, there's countless cute moments from the male character going over to this person's reception desk and then the receptionist drunkenly kissing this guy Ooh. after the Dundies at Chili's. They propose at a gas station in the pouring rain. Pam and Jim. Yeah. Yeah, from the office. That might be one of, I don't know. I can't think of too many couples better than that one. I don't know. Dwight and uh, <laughs> what was her name? Angelica? No. Uh, Dwight and, and Angela. 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 That was a tough one. That was a love triangle. And she wanted them to fight for her. And <laughs> that's love. That's love right there. Uh, all right. We're going to go with one more, but I want to go out on a, on a limb for the last one. Let's put yeah, you a little bit a out of your comfort Pick a crazy zone. one. All right. Yeah. Pick a crazy one. We've never rooted for our boss or our employee quite as much as we did for these two characters uh, in this show. So in the 1990s, basically viewers hung on every high pitch word that came out of this woman's mouth as she tried to hurry up her. The nanny. Yeah. Okay. And so her character is literally called Fran, but what is the guy's name? Can you remember? Ooh, I have no idea. It's probably something like Dave. Mr. She well, she worked for him, so she called him Mr. Oh, I have no idea what his name is. Mr. Sheffield. Maxwell Sheffield. Sheffield. Yeah. Mr. Sheffield. I can't do the voice. Nobody can. <laughs> Nobody should be able to. Right. That's up there with the Gilbert Gottfried voice. Like you hear that and you're like, oh, I know exactly who that is. Other couples that made this list, I'm not going to make you guess. I think you would have got this one, Bob and Linda from Bob's Burgers. Bob's Burgers. I love Bob's Burgers. Corbin watched. That's one of his favorite shows. Totally inappropriate for his age, by the way. Of course. I mean, I'd expect nothing less. Yeah. I'm a big fan, and I'm sure you're not. Schitt's Creek is hilarious. 
I actually have watched a lot of Schitt's Creek because Megan loves that show. Okay. So I have watched all of it. Who nice. was your favorite couple in that show? Was it the, the, the mom and dad? No, God, no, no. Well, actually, okay. Really, it's what was the, the sister. The sister's name was yeah. Alex, right? Alex, yeah. Yeah, Alex, Alexis. Alexis and Alexis. her veterinarian friend. I think they have Ooh, such a beautiful yeah. romance and it ends so sadly at the end of the show. Spoiler alert. That one's my favorite because you see a lot of growth, like a lot. Of, like you see a lot of growth with really all the characters over the course of those seasons. Right. But but there's so much growth with Alexis that you don't expect because in the beginning, yeah, do you really just think she's like a write off character? But she's she she really impressed me. Uh, in this list, they had the the gay guy and and the other gay guy. Uh, so David and Patrick. Yeah, when they were running their like their apothecary shop together yeah. and stuff. They do cute yeah. stuff too, but um, I think Alexis and I can't remember the vet's name, but that's he was the buff blonde guy, right? He was yeah, the vet. but he was like cheesy yeah. and like he was so in right. love with her, and like I think that's what's really beautiful too. Like David and his partner's relationship is very like, oh honey, you're a piece of shit. But the vet, oh, I wish I could remember his name. He is just so madly in love with Alexis that like he gets so frustrated, but he just still loves her. Like he knows that she's like so much more trouble than she's worth but he still loves her and right. that's like that's love right like when you just accept oh yeah for someone and like you know like you're who they shit are and i still want to be with you and vice versa that that's the greatest love story ever told nate Ooh, that's deep nate that's deep on a side note okay. my favorite part in any of the episodes on shit's creek was when the mom was trying to teach him how to make an omelet and it was yeah. like fold in just the fold. cheese. It's it like, fold. what the fuck what does, does that mean? mean? What does that mean? It means like, well, fold it fold in. It. it means fold. Yeah, yeah just fold it. <laughs> yeah, it's an iconic GIF now. There's so many good lines. Did you get to the parts where uh, Mora, the mom, is in the crows have eyes? No. So she's like, right? She's like a failed actress, and for like many seasons, she never gets a part. But she finally mm-hmm. gets a like a part in like a movie in the Ukraine called The Crows Have Eyes, and you can tell like it's just this like direct to dvd piece of shit and then like through like their fucked up pr they end up blowing it up and then like they accidentally like do a thing where they release crows and it's a disaster and like it's oh, so no. fantastic and they they there's like so many references in the show even after that <laughs> happens to the crows have eyes like 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 alexis will be doing like her pr campaign or like they'll be uh, it's or that she comes out in like the thing she wore to the premiere of crows have eyes and it's all like a crow's costume and like just it just keeps yeah. popping up in like inappropriate situations it's so good i love Shit's creek you can tell I think it's it's literal genius. Took some time for me to warm up to, but the humor is right. so good. And so much growth. I like characters that grow. Like, it's not just a sitcom. Like, those characters right. really, um, you really grow attached. Oh, because in the beginning, they were awful people. And I was like, man, I don't want to yeah. watch this show because I don't like anybody on the show. Even the dad. I'm like, man, oh, yeah. you suck too. <laughs> but then by by like the, the middle of it, you're like, okay, I'm starting to get attached to these people. Yeah. The, you start to relate them to like, oh... I have this terrible person in my family and you know what? I still love them. <laughs> like, and that's, that's who these people are. Like, Oh, I know they're going to do shitty things, but I also see that they're trying, you know? Right. Yeah. It's huge. That's love. Nate. That's love. Yeah, that's love. All right. So we talked about perhaps one of the greatest love stories of all time, but that's maybe the second greatest love story because I think the first greatest love story, Nate is Trevor Belmont and Abraham Van Helsing. I think so too. They just don't know it yet. They just don't know it. And with that, let's transition over to Daft Monks. The darkness is approaching yet again. The vampires have outnumbered us four to one, and our odds are not in our favor. It seems as if all hope is lost. I wouldn't quite say lost, as probably misplaced or something along those lines but either way fear not for van helsing and belmont are here to save you and welcome back to daft monks on our continued journey to fight evil let's do a a recap nate what have what have we done so far that's really stood out in your mind's eye if you will (laughs) not a whole lot cotton Bold strategy, Cotton. <laughs> Bold strategy, episode three, and we've gone nowhere um, with this story. I wonder if it'll pay out for him. <laughs> so in the first episode, right, fiasco, Van Helsing has to go get a J-O-B. 
that turns into a D I A S T E R and mm-hmm. basically dread captain pirate sky lord mcnibbles whose name yeah. we keep changing he basically got turned into a were rat and kind of got beheaded by blade and long story short these were some of dracula's minions who created this and that's very ballsy for dracula's minions to kind of come out into a village during the day and and, and cause that kind of commotion and so from that blade kind of informs us that dracula's back more powerful than ever was mm-hmm. not killed by Abraham Van Helsing and Joe Belmont at their castle siege event from season one. And that the vampires and minions of the world are gathering, darkness is gathering, and something needs to be done. And so in episode two, we are going to an address a, a couple towns over where Blade has a contact at the, the church where we can learn more about what's going on and, and maybe some leads on how to stop Dracula. But episode two, we seem to have ran into some crazy orphans in this town called Beaverlin who worship an oracle who may or may not be Greta Thunberg and teaches the kids to love the environment and to do so by eating human people. Correct. So that leads to a hairy situation. We actually have an encounter, some battling. We lick some rocks. Everything's good. Not so good for one of the orphans. I think he gets eaten. And now we're on our merry way to the church to meet with Blade's contact. Correct. Now, here we are. Here it says on the map that this place is called Heron Vineyard. This is the church of all churches. An entire town dedicated to this church. It has to be the main base of operations to slay the D. Yes, I, I hear they call it the Vatican of the East. The great value Vatican. Yes, the Walmart, if you will. Not the Sam's Club, which is a lot nicer, but the Walmart for sure. And not even like a a super Walmart, just a regular Walmart. Disgusting. (laughs) Okay, so um, we make our way down the path to Heron Vineyard. The trees start to break apart, and it is just a huge vineyard. There's uh, grapes growing all over the place. And it's basically one road going through this humongous vineyard that leads to almost like a small castle type deal. Huge white columns coming up. Very beautiful, like how all churches do. They put all their money back into themselves instead of the community. (laughs) Wow, very political. (laughs) Sorry, sorry. (laughs) Sometimes I can be on the left side too, Nate. Okay. And yeah, and we just walk up and it seems that there are workers out in the field and everything. If you want to try to like greet them, Van Helsing for sure is walking by and like, greetings. Yes, yes. I, yes, it's me again. Hey, um, Belmont, my boy, do you think I should put on disguise or do you think Blade let them know I was on my way or what's on the, the ticket, the agenda, if you will? Yes, well, uh, you know, you've gained literally, I think, something like 40 pounds. So I think you're pretty well disguised. You look a lot older, a little bit homely. You have less hair. So honestly, if you just want to slap on one of those mustaches, I think you'd naturally be stealth. Just to be safe, I'm going to put on two. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a nun outfit <laughs> with a mustache. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We've never really established, but we make all of this up. Like, Nate has, like, a story in his mind, but, like, pretty much every any kind of improv we do on this episode or role play, none of it is planned. So you're welcome. Okay, here I am, officially dressed. I am ready to infiltrate the church. I almost feel like you're standing out more than you did before with this. Are you sure this is entirely necessary? Oh, absolutely, my boy. Unless, of course, we show up and it's all men working at this church, and then that might be a little awkward. But then again, I have the mustache. So it's a win-win. I'm covering all my bases at this point. I mean, what's the likelihood of a church being ran by all men patriarchy? (laughs) What's the likelihood of that? Inconceivable, really. (laughs) But no, really, you look like a penguin. And I'm not talking about the penguin, the one that we keep talking about that is just really depressing looking, but like an actual like Arctic bird that, you know, you got the white and the black hood. And yes, I think that's what that's what they call these uh, nuns, if you will, uh, flying penguins of some sort. I assume they have powers like a cleric, because they have a a strong sense in their god, and I'm sure God's got to give them something to be believed in, maybe, you know, not just like feeling better about oneself. He's got to be actually giving you something tangible, I'm sure. 
That sounded a lot like witchcraft, so why don't you let me do all the talking? No, oh, I wasn't going to talk anyways, because I don't know what voice to use. Like, am I a man? Am I a woman? I have a mustache. Either way, I'm covering all the bases, you know? It's be wrong of the church to assume my gender at this point. Like, how dare you, you know? <laughs> you know, this kind of reminds me of, who's the character in Venture Brothers, uh, the girlfriend of the of Monarch? Oh, yeah, I do. I do. She talks like this, but yes. she's like a really sexy Smoking woman. She's, yeah. Yeah. Say hey, Tal. I think it's like Doctor Girlfriend or something. I'm imagining like that's kind of the case with you. Of like you look like a female, but you have clearly a man's face, and so it's just like you could be brother sister or lady brother or something. (laughs) Oh, the excellent idea! From here on out, I am sister brother. That is my disguise name, and we shall keep it at that. Brilliant. I'm also granting myself plus one in deception skills. (laughs) We're gonna need it. (laughs) Yeah. Okay, yeah. So uh with that, do we are we just going through the front door? Oh no. Uh I changed kind of like out in the road and now we are approaching the front and there is already a uh person standing there, a man, a human being, kind of like medium build, wearing just dark colored cloth garments, very nice looking, very expensive, but very dark drab almost and he is like piercing you with his gaze as we're walking up then i think this guy is hitting on one of us but i can't tell who it's probably me my boy i look dashing in this outfit i mean sensual like a lady (laughs) i'm a lady and that's that's my job like a rugged woman yes yes like a like the kind of lady you would take camping or hunting you know (laughs) a real class act someone who doesn't mind shitting in the woods you get all of that from one glance at this outfit. <laughs> um, can I do like an insight? I want to see if like, is he actually looking at us? Me? You? Uh, yeah, do a, give me a roll. Okay. Does a, or 12. Oh yeah, that's fine. He is looking at you and not the ridiculous fat man nun. So does he, is he guarding the door or he's just standing by it, staring at us? Yeah, he's, he's kind of standing in front of the door and he has his arms in that posture that like a uh, little finger always does where they're like, they're like his arms are inside of his own sleeves kind of deal. <laughs> like that kind of thing, like looking at us. Yes. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, it is I, Trevor Belmont, uh, and my, my associate, traveling, traveling companion. Sister no, nun. Don't. Sister brother. <laughs> I fucked up already, my boy. Don't let him know. <laughs> yeah, he'd no word to her. She's a, a nun in training. Uh, still has a lot of work to do. Uh, but nonetheless, we are here to speak with uh, this person. And I hand them the paper from Blade with the contact on it. Uh, he grabs it without saying a word to you and reads over it, breaking open Blade's wax seal that was on the little envelope thing. And you can watch his eyes darting back and forth as he's reading. And he looks up at you, down with the letter, looks up at Van Helsing. You see his shoulders like kind of like, ugh, like shrug down and he takes a breath out and then he goes back to the letter (laughs) and folds it up and stuffs it inside of his uh, shirt sleeve there. Very well. It seems we have been expecting somebody, but I did not know it would be you, Master Slayer, and you, person who we excommunicated for impersonating a woman, you are back. Okay. Looks like the gig is up then, missing. Oh, I thought he was talking about you. My disguise is so <laughs> perfect. How could he possibly see through this? But if he's talking about me, I guess I'll at least dislodge these two melons that I stuffed underneath my <laughs> shirt. <laughs> <laughs> they're becoming quite uncomfortable. Oh, would you look at that? They're not melons. They're pineapples. No wonder they were chafing me so badly. Anyway, do you know where our contact is? I'm sure we don't want to draw a lot of attention to Van Helsing being here. We just need to chat with him real quick, get some information, and we'll be on our way. No need to cause a ruckus here. Yes, I am that contact. Now, please follow me inside. We have a lot to discuss very well sister brother oh very well yes uh, oh yes i have been in many a church i know my way around oh uh, and then he like kind of let me roll for it oh no he's fine i was gonna have him stumble on the stairs but he catches himself and <laughs> he's right back up these weak ankles you know and then so um without another word this man uh obviously a member of the church is now guiding you through these tall huge pillars rising up grand cathedral inside and just a long, long hallway. 
I want to imagine as we walk in, we like dip our hands in the holy water and like Trevor Belmont, like, you know, does like the prayer, like Father, Son, Cross thing with mm-hmm. the holy water. And then Van Helsing just like dabs it on his neck, like trying to cool himself <laughs> off. <laughs> Good idea, my boy. Oh, this has had a, this has been a long time coming. And then he kind of like takes his underwear that he's been having and like kind of <laughs> dips it in the water and wrings it out in there. And he's like, oh, that will be better later. I'm sure of it. <laughs> let me, let me roll and see if I can do that stealthily. Ooh, and at 20, I did that completely still. <laughs> Nobody saw that somehow. The guy's just like guiding us through, like looking straight forward. I feel like that's something like, right, like a uh, little finger would do. It would just be like staring yeah. directly forward. Yeah, man, I love that character. But yeah, and then he guides you down and then he comes across uh, behind kind of like the main stage, if you will, where they do all of their presenting and worship or whatever. And then there's a hatch that he opens up. Er- and then uh, leads long stairs going straight down, 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 down. Uh, very dark in here. Kind of creepy. Kind of surprised the only entrance down through the basement where you keep secret information is through a hatch door on the literal stage of the sermon floor. That's pretty unique. I wasn't going to say anything, but yes, very odd choice in design, I'm sure. There are reasons beyond your comprehension for why we must resort to these measures. You see, we are all being hunted at this point. We are part of an organization, as you know. The church itself is very involved in hunting and slaying Dracula, and we have been doing it for many a year, but now our hunters are becoming very thinned out. They are not reporting back, and I fear the worst. We have lost more than half of our standard hunters and we are relying on help from others to come to our aid at this point now please continue to follow it's not much further yes of course of course thank goodness because i'm getting a little chafed back here i don't do good on stairs or inclines or declines or flat plains yes or uneven roads or grassy roads or roads or friction in general yes Gravity does a number on me. <laughs> and you hear like the the church guy just go, oh, okay, yep, yep, all right. <laughs> and then uh, you go down probably like three more flights of stairs. This basement is deep. And then you come into just a small rectangular elongated dark room with torches going down the side wall. And there are weapons along along the side. And then there are maps and charts and scrolls and books all along the other side. And then he is leading you basically to a large table kind of set up in the center with candles and some more torches around it for better lighting. I whisper over to Van Helsing and I'm like, Van Helsing, this reminds me of of the Belmont family stash and then uh, the catacombs underneath our mansion. We used to keep ancient relics, weapons, many scrolls of, of knowledge on how to kill beasts. This really brings back a lot of memories. This is a good sign. Oh, yes. I was thinking it's a great sign because this brings back my favorite memories of being trapped in an opium den for 12 months. That's a whole year, my boy. Now, I wasn't really trapped. I could have escaped. But every time I would just find another pillow and be like, well, maybe one more hit on the opium pipe, you know? And then this kept going on and on and on for 12 whole months. That's nothing like my story. (laughs) You kind of look back at his face and he's like, wide-eyed and just smacking his lips like, yeah, those were the days. (laughs) Now please gather around the table and I will show you what we have so far. I'm imagining this is very like James Bond, like the M agent is like, I have a pen that shoots a laser and (laughs) like the six gadgets that are just like stupid as shit. Yeah, it's kind of the vibe I'm trying to to (laughs) go for. We both gather around the table and then there is a large map it looks like of the known continent, or at least, I don't know, make a roll for it. You're smarter than me. History? Yeah. 15 total. Oh, perfect. Yeah, you know it. That's the the continent that we are currently on, and you have actually been across a good portion of it in your chasing of Dracula. Now, this is what we have so far. And then he has pins that he is putting in. We have been attacked here, here, and here in the open in the middle of the day, by daywalkers. A new type of demon that Dracula has produced. We don't know how to fight them. We are out of our element. It's a new creature. 
Impossible. You must be mistaken. There's only one daywalker, and that's Blade, and he's on our side. That's what we thought as well, and we thought we had the upper hand with him. But this is no longer the case. Several of our best slayers have been cut down in the streets in the middle of the day, while some man is just selling trinkets on the side of the road, and then they spill out all over the place. <laughs> I don't know if that's a coincidence, but he's been at every location. He's having a hell of a week. And so you've come to us, Trevor Belmont and my companion, sister brother. Oh, I mean, Abraham Van Helsing. Yes, it is I, Van Helsing. Surprised, aren't you? <laughs> no, because I read the letter and it said who you are and who you're coming with. So no, I'm not surprised. We have some demands, <laughs> Belmont starts with. Firstly... We will remove the excommunication from Van Helsing upon successful completion of this mission. And in the meantime, he will receive aid from any religious safe house you have available. We can do that, much to my dismay, but we are in a bit of a pickle. And so, yes, those demands shall be met. Secondly, lots of money. Now, back in the day, I used to do this for the good of the people. But you people are terrible. Literally, how much money did you spend on this cathedral to God? Meanwhile, people outside are picking grapes and smashing them with their feet until they blister. The community is suffering. The, the people are miserable. I know you have money stored away, and I want a cut of that so that I can give it back. Fair enough. Do you have a percentage in mind for what you wish to be paid? I like lean over to Van Helsing. I'm like, he's talking percentages. I was just going to ask for like 100 gold or something. This is even better than we thought. What do, what do we do? You lost me at percentage. That is a word I have not heard. What, what, what exactly does it mean? Like if I have a sandwich and I give you half, that's like 5%. What if I just give you a tomato? We'll take 20% of what's in your vault um, to be distributed to the people. And then uh, without even hesitation, he's like, very well. And then reaches into his little hand sleeve there and pulls out a scroll and whips it out. And it's already like a signed up contract already done up. <laughs> he crosses out 40% and like writes in 20 <laughs> and initials it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. That's what happens. It's in the podcast. Ooh, it seems we made a deal because look at that. He changed a thing and then put another thing. So I think we won up them on this one, my boy. Yes, there's no defeating the deaf monks in negotiation or combat, my friend. Lastly, Mr. Littlefinger Man, I'm going to need a number of these relics. I'm sure many of these are, are what, wholly imbued or something to the effect, daylight enlightened, perhaps, that we can use. Yes, feel free to look around and take what you wish. If you are not successful, I doubt any of this will be here for much longer anyways. So please, take what you want. Say less, my friend. Very well. I'm just going to start cramming as much as I can grab anything. Anything <laughs> interesting catch uh, Belmont's eye? He, he is used to like weapons, artifacts, so he would have an eye for... Yeah, one second. Let me just roll. Ooh. There are actually 10 things that catch your eye, and I will make up some random list for you, but I'm going to say, so yeah, let's do half weapons, so five weapons, and then let's do three magic scrolls, and then two armor pieces that you grab. Uh, I'm going to say that you need to fucking look at them for a while and fucking... Yeah, study. Yeah. Um, that sounds good. Van Hennessing, do, you, do any of these catch your eye? Is there anything specifically you're looking for? There was only one thing that caught my eye, and that was like, where's he hiding that scroll, you know? Like, what's going on here? So I want that quill. <laughs> <laughs> the one he was writing the contract with? Yes, it's, it's probably magical, and I want it for my collection. <laughs> I'm going to look at the like little finger guy and the contact and just be like, is it? Like, cock my head without saying anything. And then you see him sigh again, and he's like, oh. It's my favorite quill. <laughs> and he just kind of tosses it over to Van Helsing. And it is magical, and I'll give it some random magical <laughs> property later on. See, we're not hard to please, and we're people of the people, you know? If that makes any sense at all, which it probably did. Now listen, there's something you are missing here. Look at this map. Look at all the points you are attacking, or you are attacked at. Yes. Is there some pattern that I haven't seen before? 
Exactly. And I throw my dagger and it's like, all these points were converging around this one point. And then my dagger like hits into like a, a little spot. Okay. And in that spot, that is a like swamp land area that is like kind of, it's no directly in the center. And it kind of almost makes these pins now that you're really looking at it. And, you know, give me a roll just to see. What kind of roll? Uh, what are we, investigation or? It is a 14. Oh, that's enough. You can see that these pins lined up almost make like a really rudimentary pentagram. And then now in the very center is your dagger now in this swamp land area. You see, they're, they're encircling. They're, they're creating ley lines that outline this pentagram. And in the center here is probably the focus of whatever they're after. Now, what that is, to, would you perhaps know what, what that could be? I would have to research my books. I can't believe that I have missed something like this. It seems so easy now that you bring it in front of my eyes. I have hope now that you too, well, at least you. And he looks over and Van Helsing's like twiddling his like quill and like tickling himself with it. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> well, that at least you might be able to help us in our matters. But as far as I know, there used to be some ancient, ancient ruins there, but I would have to delve deeper to get more of it. Yes, well, you delve deeper and then send it to your contacts at these different locations and we can stop in and see if you make any progress. But I think for ourselves and Van Helsing, we should maybe make haste and, and locate what exactly they're looking for. Very well, I can do this for you. Um, based on the map and on your current location, it's probably going to take you about seven days worth of travel to make it to this swampland area. Is there anything else that you require from me before you continue on? Well, I would like some of that famous wine from your vineyard. You know, you call it blood of Christ, but I call it vino. De... <laughs> uh, it's Italian. It's very nice. Yeah. <laughs> it's real Italian. I've never been to Italy per se, but I heard this is all they drink. No water, just the vino. Molto bene. No, we just need a good meal, some good wine, and perhaps not even a full night's rest, but at least a little bit of rest this evening. I understand we are on an important mission, and, and rest in this very lovely place, I'm sure, is much needed. I am down a whopping five hit points. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that'd be great. Thank you. Belmont's just going to like take his stuff and take his leave, uh, and he's going to go explore uh, the building, the architecture, a little bit. Okay. Um, he guides you. He stays with you while you go up. And then once you're kind of at the hatch, he closes it and then goes back down to uh, start his research on this swampland area. So now you and Van Helsing are here in the main portion of the church. Where to from here? Yes, 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 my boy. I have something to tell you. Okay, I'm all ears and mustache. Go ahead. That pentagram stuff was total bullshit. No way. You made that up? Yes, absolutely. So here's the deal. He is not going to trust us to get the job done. That's very clear and also kind of warranted. So he will send his own reconnaissance team to that spot. They will get slaughtered and draw in most of the attention of the actual daywalkers as they were. That will allow us an opening to attack their real target. Oh, yes, the old one to sucker punch. He wasn't wrong. It is a temple, but not in the swamp. <laughs> Silly. <laughs> Oh, you're familiar with this area? What, what, what could it be? I've never heard of such a thing. Uh, I've only been so far, and my ex travels only extend, you know, to uh, pubs and opium dens. But what do you think is really out there, my boy? We don't talk about it much. It was abandoned a long time ago. It used to be a village. It was, <laughs> it was a village created on top of an Indian burial ground. And, uh, well, you can imagine how that went. Oh, kind of like a pet cemetery. <laughs> What's that? It's a it's a place where you buried your loved ones if your loved ones are small and covered in fur. Oh, yes, that's exactly what it sounds like. These little mm. pygmies basically came out of the ground and killed everybody, and then nobody goes there anymore. It's basically pygmy town. I think we're talking about two different things. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard it both ways. <laughs> Have you never had a cat or a dog or, you know, a dog well, or a cat? You know, I, we had beasts that we would capture and, and we would, you know, dissect them. And then I would 
learn how to kill them if they were still alive, but uh, I wasn't really allowed to have animals around. Hmm, that's interesting. I'm going to jot this down because there is nothing better than a kitty cat. Because they are furry, and sometimes they want pets, and then sometimes they're a real asshole. But I like that kind of relationship. <laughs> oh, I guess we're learning a lot about both of you. About each yes, other. it's like a romantic Valentine's episode. <laughs> Anyway, don't let Littlefinger know. Let's stick with the plan. He'll send his reconnaissance team, I know it, to that central location. And we will go check out the, what did you call it? Pet Cemetery? Yes, that is what we shall call it. Pet Symmetry. (laughs) Um, Is there anything else that you want to do inside this church? What do you think, my boy? Do we still stay the night and get rested up? Or do we hit the road and just let them think that we're a day behind? I think we go to spend the night, but leave in the cover of darkness so they don't know. Ooh, that is my second most favorite thing. First being leaving in the daytime so I don't fall in any potholes and twist my ankles. But second favorite is leaving in the middle of the night. Excellent. Before we leave, I want to do one. Well, before we go up to our chambers that I assume have been laid out for us, Mm. um, I want to tell Van Helsing. It's very important you look at the stained glass. These things always tell stories, and there is always something in here that you didn't know would be here. Like, kind of like that Little Mermaid one we saw where there was a giant penis. Oh, yes. Or the hidden Mickeys (laughs) at Disneyland. (laughs) Wait, are there hidden Mickeys? Yeah, there's hidden Mickeys. Oh, we'll have to talk about that. I don't don't know. Okay. On the next episode, (laughs) hidden Um, Mickeys. Where are they? What's their purpose? Who put them there? Is it run by the Nazis? Uh, anywho, do I see? I just want to do, um, I don't know. What do you want me, an investigation or an insight or something? Or no, no, I want something different than investigation. You can give me a religion. I, I do have a super high religion. It's a nat 20. Boop, 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 boop. Tell me if there is anything amazing hidden or any like stories being told through these okay. stained glass. Yes. On the one side, I'm going to say the east and there's a west. So on the east side, it is actually the tale of how Blade came to be in this church. And every panel is showing different steps in the process of uh, a lady being bitten by a vampire at night and giving birth in the day. And then Blade okay. is growing up. He's a small child and he excels at everything. He's attacking shit. But then on the other side, it shows that there was another child. But this one wasn't quite the same. And in every portion of the stained glass, this child has like a cloak kind of half wrapped over their face. They're not tolerant of sunlight it seems like as well as blade kind of deal like they're covered like uh like a burka kind of deal and it shows them doing the same thing and then at the end there's a, a like a fight kind of deal between him and blade and they both survive based on the stained glass there's a lot of stained glass here a lot of hallways a lot of pictures going on <laughs> you're getting a lot of information from this and he the covered one just continues to walk off while blade stands there looking heroic and majestic at the church here. Are you seeing what I'm seeing, Van Helsing? Yes. There's a lot of Blade. I'm tired of Blade. It's always Blade this, Blade that. I'm, ugh, I'm so sick of it. Plus, with all this stained glass in here, it doesn't let in enough natural light. And that's what I need to do my best disguises. Oh, you beat me to it. This church is so far up Blade's asshole that they dedicated numerous hallways and every one of these stained mirrors over to him. It's unbelievable. Not a single story about the Belmont clan and the numerous deeds that they've done for these people. Unbelievable. Nothing at all. And look at this one. It's all been scratched up. (laughs) It's like the last frame. (laughs) Yeah, the very last one. It is like, uh, it looks like somebody was trying to remove information. So they just kind of scraped it and scratched it up. So it just almost looks like different multicolored opaque glass. Unbelievable. How many pounds of gold has been spent on this architecture and they still failed to restore some of the most important pieces of these relics, even if it is about Blade? It just shows where where they stand with things. Money hungry, really, I think. You say like clutching like your quill and like bag of gold. That they gave us. <laughs> patting it like I'm patting my belly. Like, mm, <laughs> yes. Money hungry. Disgusting. I am hungry. <laughs> okay. I'm feeling a little bit parched, especially after dealing with those cannibal children. Hopefully there's food in the room. 
Yeah, and with that, um, I've done everything I wanted to as Belmont. So I'm down to go to dinner or up to my room or wherever you uh, care to lead us. Okay. And uh, so we wander around a little bit, and I think we've been wandering by ourselves for too long because somebody comes and finds us. Um, They don't talk or anything. They kind of just like nod at you and like give you the hand, like come follow me. And then they lead us down a hallway and then points on both sides of each hallway, left and right. And these are our rooms where we will be staying for the night. Are you comfortable staying in your own room? I know it's been a long time since we didn't share a room. I know you have those night terrors. I think I'll manage for the night. They want to keep us split up for one reason or another. So maybe be on guard. Ooh, is that a French word? On guard? I don't know. But let's be that. Let's be French. <laughs> awesome. I'm also kind of imagining like Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom where like we're, <laughs> we're going to like go through a bookcase and into like an under like Alibaba. <laughs> <laughs> Next episode of D Hunters. Yeah, it could happen. It could happen. Is that where we want to leave it for tonight, or do you have a little bit more planned? I think so. That's all I have prepared for tonight. And so for next time, I need to get you your magic items, uh, whatever the fuck my magic quill's going to (laughs) do. And then I have a general idea of where I'm taking us. But with anything that we do, I like to do the other stuff, the random made up stuff. Hopefully I didn't blow you up too much by totally changing the location (laughs) on the map. (laughs) No, you're fine. That was great. Thanks a lot, Nate. Uh, happy Valentine's Day, man. Hope, uh, hope you're feeling loved in your new home. Oh, you too, man. And I think I am. We're short on space right now. So Roscoe's been sleeping in the same bed with me and Megan. And yeah. when I woke up at three this morning, like I always do, he like rolled over and he's like, I love you, dad. And I was like, oh, Aww. I love you too. Now fucking go back to sleep. Do you forgive him for eating all your ravioli now? Never. <laughs> the, the way his eyes looked at me as he had that mouthful of delicious pasta, I'll never forget that. I'll be on my deathbed and I'll be like, remember when you were three years old? My bones hurt, but you stole my ravioli, you son of a bitch. Clearly, I'll be talking like Van Helsing when you're 90 years old. Who knows? I'll probably get the dementia and will rattle off all my characters just in my deathbed. That would be terrifying. (laughs) The poor orderly, I can only imagine. (laughs) You're just doing like Penguin and Sister Brother and just a bunch of like, nobody knows who these characters are. I'm hoping that they're like, this guy has lived the most interesting life. (laughs) (laughs) He's been on adventures. (laughs) Awesome. Well, thank you so much for listening. Uh, If you are enjoying the show, feel free to leave us a review, a comment, whatever you'd like. And we will talk to you next week. And also, don't forget, come and see us at Wawa Westcon in Tucson if you are there. Yep, March 5th. See you there. Bye.